Hello, 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 and welcome to another, well, it's, it's the triumphant return of coffee time, I think. I haven't looked at the news, but I'm sure there's going to be lots of stabbing, uh, because that seems to be what's happening in the world at the moment. Um, so, uh, we'll have a look at the Daily Mail website and see what news is out there. I'm not promising anything, mind. I'm not promising anything. You know, because I've not looked. I've not looked. I'm just warning you. I'm just warning you now. Uh, here we go. Sydney rocked by another mass stabbing event. Ah, boy. Oh, here we go. Let's do this one. Let's do this one. The NHS, the political football that loves to get kicked down. Do you know? Do you know? There's not enough money being pumped into NHS. Did you know that? Do you know that? I wonder what they spend the money on. I'll tell you. Let's go. I suppose this is this is woke watch and and gender woo woo watch. Let's get aboard the gender woo woo train. Woo woo. Um, we're doing <laughs> woke pandering. No, that's not a panda. That's you know that's anti racist. Um, NHS. This is <laughs> NHS bosses. Where is this? This is again reported in the Sun, but the Daily Mail said oh, we want we want some of this. We want some of this. But apparently, patients at a hospital in Stoke on Trent have been um, have, have outraged. They're outraged. Oh, if they're outraged, I expect their arms to be folded. Oh. At the least, hands to be in pockets. But yeah, um, people are outraged because um, they, the, the, the hospital there brought out a, a banner featuring flags for 21 genders or sexualities. Who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk it? But I bet us bald men aren't represented on it because remember baldism is the last ism. It's the last acceptable ism. And I'm fighting I'm fighting baldism now. I'm fighting it. You know, for those times that someone slapped you on the head, you know, or th or called you a bit of ball, I'm fighting against it. No more baldism. No more baldism. Hashtag be kind. But yeah, this is um, this is a banner that they put up, which looks like I don't know someone just. V it looks like the they just vomited rainbows. Here we go. Look at that. Everyone is welcome here. Except you bigots who, who aren't part of this rainbow. I mean, look, there's just, there's just, I don't know what's going. On. What the? I thought they were just there to cure people, you know, of their illnesses and maladies. This is at the Royal Stoke Hospital. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this is. Uh, you've got to remember that last year they they included 18 gender options on a patient form. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, this was tweeted. Yeah, this is in, in support of Pride Month. Wait a minute, I thought every month was Pride Month, isn't it? But that's uh, that's from last year. So it shows just how bad journalism is. Uh, they've got no stories. This is a story from last year. <laughs> uh, but Jane Hare, who's the chief people officer, people. We understand what kind of people. What kind of people are you, are you officiating over? We understand that different individuals may have varying views on symbols and flags used to represent different identities. What's your identity? Do I identify as bald? No, I don't. In my mind, I have a full head of hair. But people, other people don't see me like that. Um, but this banner symbolises our commitment to achieving a more inclusive organisation where both colleagues and people we care for are encouraged to be themselves. Now, again, have you ever known anyone in the NHS when they wheel someone in who's, I don't know, he's been in a road accident, his legs are all mangled, and they wheel him in and they go, is he a bender? He is. He likes bum fun. Wheel him out. We're not treating him. It's never happened. Even when all that kind of stuff was illegal. <laughs> It never happened. People got got treated. So, again, I think it's. I, do you know? Do you know who I blame? Do you know who I blame? Do you know who I blame the printers. 
the printers who are printing these banners and all these flags. They're the guys that came up with this. They're the guys that have come up with all these different identities and sexualities. Just so they could print more flags. It's quids in for them. They must be rolling in it. They must be apps. They thought, well, you know, photocopying. Do you remember in everywhere had a copy centre back in the like the eighties and nineties? You know, you couldn't you couldn't spit for hitting a, a, a true print or a you know copy centre. Puh. Colour photocopies. You know, you remember. Some people don't because they weren't born then. But it was a thing. But then everyone got a colour printer and spent the fortunes on ink cartridges, which, you know, in terms of, you know, their liquid value, the milliliter value, is worth more than gold. Um, I'm just saying. it's that's, this, is, this is it. This is it. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the Daily Mail asked the big question. Will your holiday plans be disrupted by tensions in the Middle East? Because, you know, this is what you ask, isn't it? You see Iran trying to start World War Three with their missile and drone attack on Israel. And you see Israel, you know, doing its best to destroy every last acre of the, of the Gaza Strip. And... And you think you think well, you know, maybe you know World War Three might be starting, but what about me holidays? What about me holidays? Well, don't worry, folks. Daily Mail have got you sorted here. They they're going to tell you if you can still go on holiday to a, a World War Three hotspot. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Um, more than ten airlines have had to cancel or reroute flights over the last two days, including EasyJet, Qantas, KLM, Lufthansa, Wizz Air. <laughs> Why do I just think of piss? They might as well call them piss air. Whiz air, United Airlines and Air India. And uh, here's a little map for you. Look, here's a little map. Look at all those little planes. Oh, Robert Payne, he'd love that. He likes planes. Look at that. They're all avoiding. Look, they're all flying around. Like, uh-oh. 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 It's like the Iraq, Syria... Damascus, Jordan, Israel. They're like the drippy dick at the orgy. Everyone's everyone's trying to avoid them. It's like, keep away from that one. Keep, keep away from there. So, yeah, if you've got a, a lovely two-week vacation in Iraq planned, you might want to reconsider. Hey, good. We've got a boundary. We've got a boundary dispute. We've got a boundary dispute. Oh, thank God for that. Thank God for that. I thought it was just going to be hell and damnation for the entire 30 minutes. This is the story of Robert Flack and his wife Helena. And they're fighting, translate, Celia Tan. Right. Oh, because they have accused her of ripping out their gutter in a bit of £150,000 battle over the position of a boundary line between their properties. But Miss Tan has fired back and accused the church-going couple of using their daughter's deafening drumming as a weapon to torment the locals. <laughs> Miss Tan removed the neighbour's gutter in 2019, claiming it overhanging the border between their homes in Ricelip in West London. And it was a matter of inches, and it was leaking water onto her property. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. I mean... Uh, Celia Tan's home is on the right. An old hatch manor owned by Robert and Helena Flack is on the left in Ricelip. I mean, yeah, they've got a. I think they've got a, a joint bit there. Look, there's a joint bit. Is that a joint? I don't know. What is that? What is that? Is that a gate? I don't know. But it's in the London County Courts. We've got any pictures? Um. And this is this is the drumming daughter. They've, you can tell they've gone through uh, they've gone through with Facebook for that one. We want to see him playing the drums, sitting there looking demure, isn't it? And this is Helena and Robert Flack, who's got the drumming daughter, and they're suing uh, Miss Tan for trespass and the cost of replacing guttering. And um, and here is Miss Tan with her daughter. So there you go. So we've got an idea of who the people are, and um, and this is it. Yeah, it is. That's the boundary dispute. There, there it is. There. Right. Okay then. Wow. 
The court heard that tensions between between them have been building since Miss Tan and daughter Rebecca Edge moved into two bedroom house, which is valued at seven hundred thousand, where the flax have got a one point two million pound home. You see, yeah, you see. But the flax barrister Andy Swirsky highlighted the key concerns of the position of the boundary between two properties, with Miss Tang claiming it runs through the middle of the flank wall of his client's garage extension. Hey, see, they've built an extension that overhangs the town, so there you go. Oh, God, this is, this is complicated, isn't it? And Miss Tan is also seeking an injunction barring the flax from ins installing an intrusive CCTV. In, in the in the in the area, so I don't know. <sighs> but yeah, a judge has warned that whoever loses a case risks pouring money down the drain. I see, I like what they've done there. Um, but hey, they reckon it's going to cost them one hundred and fifty thousand to sort out. But um, yeah, the case is ongoing, so we'll have to uh, keep an eye out for that resolution to that one. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Meanwhile, we've got more woke uh, woke news. Um, this is f Facebook. Um, Facebook has fallen foul of the Auschwitz Museum, which has its own social media page, um, because Facebook has deleted or demoted over 20 posts in remembrance of the vic victims of the Holocaust. And the museum staff there are outraged. Oh, right. And they lashed out on Friday, saying that the removal or censorship of photos and biographical information of those who died in the death camp was hurtful to survivors, descendants, and all those committed to preserving historical truth. A statement says the post which serve as tributes to individual victims of Auschwitz have been unjustly targeted by his public's this pl platform's co content moderation system citing absurd reasons such as adult nudity and sexual activity bullying and harassment hate speech and violence incitement and um, again this is one of the, the pictures that was moved down this it says we move this lower in your feed right and it says, our technology shows this post looks like others that go against the community standards for sexual solicitation. I mean, uh, uh, now maybe Facebook is anti-Semitic, you know, and here's another one that was, this one was, uh, this picture was brought, uh, what is it, was pushed down, demoted because of violence and incitement. Which rem it, re it remembers uh, Felix Koprenuik, who was a Polish man in Auschwitz. But again, it seems like the algorithm's gone mad. This one was uh, this one violated violated standards for adult nudity and sexual activity. This one's bullying and harassment. So yeah, that's what happens when everything is decided by algorithm, and the algorithm gets it wrong. Um, there are many other photos in it as an example, um, like this one, for example, that violated community standards and was removed. Uh, it was unspecified why. You know, now again, it could be that. I imagine that it's certain religions are not very not very pro-Jew at the moment and have probably reported, manually reported all these pictures. And that's what the algorithm's probably responding to. Um, but yeah, shocking behaviour. And um, again, this one, this picture was, was demoted for bullying and harassment. There you go. Just goes to show. So Facebook has an anti-Semitism problem. And here is the list of loads of loads of pictures that have been removed or demoted by the platform. So yeah, social media, it's a cancer. Be very, very careful. Uh, what else have we got? We've got the attack in the round. 
Here you go. This is a good one. You, you could you could put this down as an animal story, but it isn't. Reality TV star Vicky Patterson. I don't know, um, has been banned. She was banned from EasyJet, apparently. She was trying to fly to Italy, where her. Uh, so she's, she's planning a wedding. She's looking at a wedding venue in Italy. And this is who she is. I mean, I don't. I have no idea what she's done or how she's got this. This tag as reality TV star, but yeah, she was planning to visit the country with a with her fiance Erkan Ramadan ahead of their September wedding. But um. But yeah, what happened was uh. Yeah, the, the her dog, ate a passport. No, not literally, but it damaged the passport. And because of the damage, again, it's, I mean, crikey, I've seen, you, you see, I've seen passports that are worn more than this. And because of that damage, EasyJet said, no, 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 you are not flying. And here is a picture of an EasyJet plane for Robert Payne, because I know he likes the planes. So yeah, she she uh, she couldn't fly. <laughs> they turned her away because of her. Yeah, that's it. So that's that's it. Don't let your dog eat your passport. But I think a little bit of leeway. It's not like it was chewed to shreds, was it? Um, what else? Oh God! Oh God! This is simulation, right? What, what is it? Simba. They sell mattresses, don't they? They've used AI, right? AI to reveal what happens to your face if you don't get enough sleep. Interesting that they're doing this. They sell mattresses, remember? Eh? Eh? You see what I'm going with this? And uh, yeah, they've come up with a number of AI images. It looks, if you get, if you get above seven hours sleep, you look like that. And if you get under seven hours sleep, you look like that. That's not good, is it? And look, above, oh, oh. is there any more? No, it's someone getting into bed. So there we go, it's some sort of image from the video that, so yeah, AI. To create the images, Simba first surveyed 2000 Britons on their sleep patterns, as well as the aesthetic conditions of their face. And uh, yeah, they've, they've got even they've got even more images that they've. Oh my god, it's just it's terrifying, and they all because they want you to buy a new mattress. Can you believe that? Look, look, look how old you're gonna get. That guy, he's only twenty one. But yeah, this is why I look the way I look because you know, like I said, only twenty one. But you end up looking like this because I don't I don't sleep too good. I think I had. I think I might have got five hours sleep last night, which isn't bad for me. So. But um, but yeah, get more sleep, otherwise you get bags under your eyes. Oh, excellent, excellent. Is it? Could it? Could it be? Could it be? Uh, hallelujah, hallo, hello. Can it be on our return? At a triumphant, magnificent, epic return of coffee time, we have a story from International Journey Journal. Inter I'll get it right in a minute. International Journal. My mouth and my eyes aren't connected, and my brain. <laughs> International Journal of Surgery Case Reports in the Zone. We're back in. We're back in the game, folks. We're back in the game. With time to lower the tone. We're going to lower the tone. Are there any pictures? I want to show if there's any pictures. I, I want to show you, but I can't. I can't show you. Maybe I can show you a little bit. If I show you, uh, oh, I can't show you that. I really can't. I can't show you that either. If only there was a way I could show you this picture without everyone throwing up. Um, what if I kind of do it from a distance? Right? What if we use? 
Look, you see that? Oh, all right, see, look at that. See that? Uh, uh. <laughs> That's some epic surgery going on. I think I might have just about, I might have um, got past the sensors there. What do you reckon? For we are going to, to Tunisia, where an unidentified 27-year-old waited 36 hours before seeking medical attention after he fractured his penis in two places while he slept huh yeah apparently now i'm not sure of this guy's story right he told doctors that the man heard a, a horrifying snap sound after rolling onto his erect member while sleeping really he's been sticking it somewhere he shouldn't Medics at the Ibn El Jazar Hospital in Quran, Quran, Karun, Quran, said he had an eggplant deformity, and there are pictures of it, but I can't show it. It really looks swollen. It like it looks like a little purple pig. All it needs is an apple in its mouth. Um, but yeah, we've done this before. The penis doesn't have a bone in it, but it can fracture when the <laughs> when the member. <laughs> suffers a sharp blunt force and you can hear a cracking or popping sound like popcorn and then it turns into the aubergine this is where the emoji comes from I'm sure of it and it turns purple and swollen uh, usually it happens during vigorous sex with in positions like something called doggy and cowgirl I don't know what that is I don't know what that is because me and Mrs. Brown only ever had sex twice because two kids two times that's how it works isn't it that's how sex works i believe um but yeah the scan showed two separate fractures which were three centimeters apart and measured 10 millimeters and seven millimeters respectively and these were repaired with sutures he suffered no lasting damage and the swelling reduced after two days and um uh, yeah and that was in the international journal of surgery case reports I mean, you know, shame there aren't any x-rays, because I can get away with x-rays. They actually kind of filleted it and went, and then sewed it up, and then, I wish I could show you. <laughs> I wish I could show you. <laughs> I can't. I can't. But there we go. Bun for the good, good, good old days. It's the good old days, isn't it? Meanwhile... Meanwhile, I hear it's warm in hell this time of year because yeah, O.J. Simpson died, didn't he? And uh, and there's been lots of talk since O.J. died. And Ruby Wax, who interviewed him, crikey, when did she she interviewed him in the nineties, wasn't it? When was that? Nineteen uh, ninety. Does it say when did she interview him? Oh, there's a lot. Nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, but here is Ruby Wax with OJ Simpson back in the day. And she revealed on Button, Darren. I need one of those pads. Send me money so I can buy one of those, those pads instead. And like, just press it and change scene without completely futzing it up like an imbecile. Um, but yeah, OJ died of prostate cancer and apparently he suffered. That's good. Um, but she recalls, this was on Good Morning Britain, uh, she said that shortly after filming the documentary, she, f she got a call from OJ. Again, I, I know this story because she said it before. Um, she got a call from OJ where he apparently confessed to the murder. He said, yeah, I did it over the telephone. Now, if only she'd have recorded it. Yeah. Oh God! Sorry, just when you when you I, I I'm not covering that one. I'm not, I'm not covering. It, I can't. It's just a really stupid story about a lifestyle blogger who decided that his newborn newborn son could survive by eating sunlight instead of food or milk. And you know, you know where that's going, don't you? You know where that's going. I'm going to show you. I can show you one image. Here you go. Um, and this is how that story ended. I'm not going to talk about what happened to the poor kid, um, but it wasn't good. 
yeah, lifestyle blogger, eat sunlight. Well, he'll be eating lots of um, lots of uh, man meat in jail for a very long time. Meanwhile, now I've done this. I've reported fly tipping. I even managed to campaign for a camera to be put up, only for them to have out for a year, and they took it down. Even though they actually got someone. They actually convicted someone and fined them something like fifteen thousand pounds, yeah, because they were a persistent fly tipper. But hey, this is the story of Julie Hancock. She complained to Stoke on Trent City Council about rubbish left by her wheelie bin in an alleyway behind her home last September. Um, and this is the moment where nothing refreshes. False reload. Yes, please. Come on, give me the news story. Yeah, so she complained. Here she is, pictured by her bin. You know, she should have had her arms folded because this lady has reason to be furious. Because although she reported the fly tipping, right, um, she ended up getting a local fine from the or from the council. They even added an extra eighty pounds onto the penalty after she admitted to permanently leaving her wheelie bin in the alleyway behind a, a property like everybody else has done I don't know if you can see that so again see that everybody's doing it did they all get a fine probably not and uh, and uh, yeah here she is with her fine because they said right this was a 400 pound penalty fine they said that the, that she'd done nothing to prevent it and basically turned around and said it was her fault for not stopping the fly tipping from happening um, but yeah yeah it was issued because she failed in her legal duty to keep her bin off a public highway and there's also it's all, but it's been rescinded right now it says it's been rescinded, but the council hasn't confirmed it, so that's interesting. Issue with the fine, the council environmental crime department stated, regardless who placed the waste in the location, the allegation is not that you placed the waste at the location, but you failed in your legal duty when transferring household waste. Yeah. A council spokesman went on to say the environmental crime team is investigating the matter in accordance with the council zero tolerance approach will hold account those or irresponsibly dispose of waste. We cannot comment further as the investigation is still ongoing. Mysterious. So she got the fine. And it's because they found a little scrap of paper with her address on. And that has probably happened when the bin men have emptied the bins. Right? Because we get it round here. We get it around here. You know when, one, you know when it's Thursday because you can smell it's Thursday. And two, you know it's Thursday because there's more rubbish on the street than there was on Wednesday. Because the bin men have been. What's that? What's that? We lost all the all the viewers who work for Biffa. I can live with it. I can live with it. It's windy out there. Gale force winds today. You can hear it. Phew, blowing a gale. Well, have we got anything funny else? No, not really. It's not. Oh, that's a windy one. That's a windy one. Uh, can't do that. That's to do with the Australian thing. Here we go. Death of the ninety-nine flake. This is this is the this is the news that we need. This is the news that we need, and this is to do. This is about the the ice cream men across the nation have been raising their prices to levels that have stunned even their staff. Yes, prices for the single night nine flake has spiked to the shocking highs of. Are you hold on to your wallets. Are you ready for this? As much as five pounds seventy five. Excuse me, showing the drastic shift. 
as Britain's favourite comb becomes unaffordable for much of the country. And for those of you who aren't in the who aren't in the country, who aren't who aren't are wise to our ways over here, this is this is a that's a twin comb with flake. No wonder it's five pounds seventy. It's a twin. That's a twin. You're getting twice as much. Again, what's wrong with you? It's not me. It's just it's just that it's me, it's me trackpad. It's me trackpad. I've had for I don't know how many years, ten years. So yeah, they reckon the cost of the cost of ice creams have gone up. See, this is the Serpentine Bar and Kitchen. That's, I guess that's in that's in London, yeah. Royal Parks, Hyde Park. Look at that, vanilla soft serve ice cream with chocolate flake, five seventy five. You can have it in a cone or in a tub. I have it in a cone, please. Mind you. Water, two pound fifteen. It comes to something when the booze is only a little bit more expensive than the cola. So I'm just, I'm just getting carried away there. So, um, yeah. And here's a picture of good old, good old days when even, even common street urchins could afford an ice cream. That was taken in 1951. There you go. We, probably some of our viewers of this are probably were there, weren't they? Again, here's some more of our viewers enjoying ice cream in 1935. What are you saying, Darren? Are you saying that all your, your viewers are really old? Yes. Yes, I am. And it all dying off. They're all dying off. Brr. I can feel a real breeze coming in. I'm sure the curtains are moving. So much for the, the these new windows are crap. I can feel a draft. Feel a draft coming in. Um, I'm bored. I'm bored. Um, I'm going to do an animal story now. I saw this one. This we're going to Russia in the Kamchatka Peninsula, right? The, a family in Russia was a bit worried because their dog disappeared. Right, and I was thinking, okay, where's the dog gone? Where's he gone? So they sent up a drone, like you do, and there's an advert, because they have to have an advert, a 20 second ad on a 30 second clip, because that's reasonable. So yeah, they got their drone up to see what happened to their dog. And then they saw what he was up to. He decided he's made friends with a family of bears. Well, I've seen it all now. Look at that. He's like, yeah, I'm a bear cub now. Woohoo! I'm running with the bears. And the bears don't seem to mind. They're like, yeah, watch out. So there you go. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's just really great. There is a still image of the dog with his bears. And it's quite unusual because dogs and bears don't usually they don't usually hang out, you know. So there we go. A nice animal story to end with there with dogs and bears getting along. And why not? Why can't we all get along? Let that be a lesson to all of us. Is there anybody in? My goodness, there's eleven people in with two likes. Only two likes? Come on guys. If you can't give me likes, give me money. Oh, a little bit of classic e beg in there. In the zone. Uh, Simon Huss is in. He says, I'm late. I hope all is well and you're with you and the family. Yeah, yeah, the kids are at school. Kids are at school, so that's why we're doing coffee time. Good to see you back because you've not been around much, have you? And uh, he said, Algorithms. Wow, it's insane, it is. And it's the perils of social media, indeed. And Renee's in. Good afternoon. Um, here, my train says, What's good? No, no it's, What's up? Isn't it? That's what all the kids are doing there, isn't it? They're going, what's up to each other? Don't show it, it sounds gross. It is. And run off. are you doing good? I'm done. I'm, I'm, there's a draft. There's a draft. I'm sitting in a draft. I'm not I'm not enjoying it very much. Um and the trackpad is awesome, very artistic, yeah, but my finger slips and I choose the wrong thing. Whereas you can buy these these numbered button things that you can pre-program and you just go and it will change the scene i'm thinking of getting one because 
I just, I just, I just go to play. I end up triggering the wrong clip. Most embarrassing, very unprofessional. You think I'd get it right by now. Payne's in. He says, good afternoon and bye. Saves time. Blimey, Robert. I had two, I had a, I had two stories about planes. Two, and he's gone. He's got, there's, no, there's no point. There's no point. He says, you have ice cream in 1935. Remember it too well. In the 40 degree days on the beach. Bring on winter. Again, like I said, it's the... Uh, it's the it's the young viewers that I'm targeting here, those through the born in 1935. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that, and uh, that was coffee time for today. Um, and now I'm off to go and make a cheese toasty because, you know, the missus went ksh, ksh. she went coffee time ksh, cheese toasty ksh. and that means I have to obey. Uh, so that was it. Thank you for watching. Killing the channel, one video at a time. I'm currently editing the next Genesis lyrics thing which no one's watching so that's good I don't know if you're picking that up lots of police so yeah do do check the Genesis lyrical analysis videos because nobody wants to watch those and that, that really pleases me because I'm trying to find content that nobody wants to watch you know it's really important and uh, that I get as few views as possible on YouTube while, while wasting as much of my time as possible it's very important because I think that's how it works isn't it the more time you spend doing this the less views you get that's how it works yeah 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 <laughs> anyway thank you for watching and I shall be gone can the channel one video at a time this was the news. You know you got to drink it up. <laughs> I, can't remember, I can't remember what I'm doing. Boy.